Okay, so here's us finishing up section 9.4 um, with a topic called the intervals of convergence with new tests called the, the direct comparison test and the ratio test. And whenever I say interval of convergence, very good. So let's see if we can apply the ratio test to this problem. I would like to know the convergence or divergence for this particular problem. I believe the ratio test that you have written in your notes says something like look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus 1 term to the nth term. If this number is, if this number, oh, I think we'll call this, I think in the notes we call this L. If L is greater than 1, Divergent. If, so I'll put a big D there for divergent. If L is less than 1, convergent. And if L is equal to 1, inconclusive. Inconclusive. All right, so there's the ratio test in a nutshell. By the way, it's assumed that all the terms A sub n are all, are all non-negative. So let's apply this idea to that series. The limit as n approaches infinity. Great big fraction bar. And on top of it, I'm going to put the n sub n plus one term on top. Would someone please help me? Three to the n plus one. Over five to the n plus one. Plus one. Plus one. That's how I, there's my n plus one term on the bottom. Same as the original. Same as the original one written in the uh, series. the n there. 5 to the n plus 1. And then I make a remark like, I really hate that form. Multiply, Multiply by the reciprocal. The limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the n plus 1 over 5 to the n plus 1 plus 1 multiplied by 5 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n. We good there? <laughs> no, I can't. I can do the threes, but I can't do the fives. Oh. Can we handle the threes? Yeah. Okay. If I handle this, and it gets rid of almost all of those exponents, why can't I do the fives? What's that? Because they have something attached to them. It's not a clean. It's not a clean break. So I end up with the limit as n approaches infinity of three on top, five n plus one on the top and then 5n plus 1 plus 1 on the bottom. And now I ask you, with your intuition, what happens as n gets really big? When, when we get really big, the, these plus 1s don't matter much. And so all that really matters is the 5n and the 5n, so 5 n, 5 to the n plus 1. So we end up with 3 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. When we get really big, the plus 1's on the, the, these two plus 1's don't matter. We essentially have 5n over 5n plus 1. It's like, when those two cancel out, we're left with just a 5n. So I can't cancel them out algebraically, 
but when I apply the limit, essentially they do cancel out. Hey, that's my number L. Mm -hmm. What now? Where? Everywhere. There are no, well, there's actually, sorry, that's, an, that's a statement that doesn't make sense. There are no x's in this expression, so there's no, there's no range of x's that we should talk about. But indeed, this series is convergent because L is less than 1. Are we good? All right. There is a second way to do this problem. Here's the second way to do this problem. That problem, oh, I didn't put my n's in, n equals 0 to infinity. That problem should be familiar to you. You know its name. I'm sorry? Power series? No. There is no x's in it. Geometric series. Is that geometric series convergent or divergent? Convergent. Why, why is that, Jordan? R is 3 fifths and R is less than 1. It's between negative 1 and positive 1. Excellent. So this is convergent. By the way, I mean, I could have written it this. Ah. Excuse me. Yeah, it's going to end up a little All right. I could have written this as 3 to the n over 5 to the n. <coughs> these two are equivalent? OK, these two are equivalent. This is a known convergent series. How does this series, 3 to the n, 5 to the n, compare to this series, 3 to the n, uh, 5 to the n plus 1? How does This number is always smaller than that number? Because its denominator is always larger, a little bit. So by the direct comparison test, because this one's, this one's always smaller than that, and that's convergent, this has to converge as well. So by the ratio test, by the direct comparison test, both ways we see that the, the, the series converges. Which one should you use? I don't know. Which one do you feel more comfortable with? Ratio is very mechanical. The downside to the direct comparison test is you've got to know what to compare it to. Yeah, I would, I would agree, Olivia. Oof. You're absolutely correct. Yes? But sorry, this, the, with, um, plus one, one is smaller than just the 3n over 5n. Yeah, 3n to the 5n is always larger than 3n to the 5n plus 1. Because this denominator is always a little bit larger, so this fraction is always a little, this fraction is always a little bit larger. Are we right for the last one, 9, 4? OK, this is not a ratio problem, nor is it a, nor is it a geometric series problem. This problem is very unique. And it's got a very interesting, uh, an interesting outcome. We're going to solve this using partial sums. We're going to find the partial sum first by looking at the partial fractions. So let's do partial fractions. 1 over n, n plus 1 is equal to, oh, I can't remember how to do partial fractions. Your guys are going to have to help me. So we'll wake up Danny so he can help me. A over n. A over n is a good start. Plus b over n plus 1. Reviving that memory? All right. Which means that 1 is equal to 
a times n plus 1 plus dn. And that's not bad notation. Okay, what do you want to set at n equal to? <laughs> Let's go with zero first. Zero's my hero. Okay, uh, if n is zero, I get one is equal to a times one. So a is one. Hmm? Good? All right. If n is negative one, I get one is equal to, goes away, b times negative one. So b must also be negative one, which means this can be rewritten as 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Are we okay? Yeah? All right. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to start doing a little exploration looking at partial sums. Let's remind ourselves that if I say s sub 1, I'm saying what is the partial sum counting only the first term? And I'm not going to write it using this expression. I'm going to use it this, this other partial fraction expression. One minus one half. Is that right, Evan? You agree with, with Anthony? We're good there? Great. Now let's do that. Okay. Partial sum two is going to be the first partial sum and then I'm going to add on to it the next term. So when n is 2, I get, from that term, I get 1 half. And from the next term, I get 1 third. They have scans. How about the third partial sum? Well, I start with the second partial sum. And now, let's add on the third term. When n is 3. If we see a trend, Perhaps we can go, what is the nth partial sum? One minus one over n plus one. Are we in agreement? It seems like every time we do this, the only thing that's left over is the one and that last fraction, and that last fraction is always one bigger than our partial sum term. Okay, great. We found the nth partial sum. The limit, I'm sorry, the true sum, the sum of the infinite series, is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth partial sum. And the nth partial sum is 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So when I apply that limit, as n goes to infinity, you get 1. The sum of that infinite series is 1. Amazing. Okay, so we found this general term for the nth partial sum. So if I said, I, if I add up the first 50 numbers, the sum of the first 50 numbers is going to be 1 minus 151st. If I add up the first 100 numbers, it's going to be 1 minus 1 over 101st. To find the sum of all of the numbers in the infinite series, it's going to be 
what happens to the nth partial sum as n goes to infinity? And when n goes to infinity, 1 over n plus 1 goes to 0. I find this particular problem a little bit on the tricky side. And unless they tell you directly to do that partial sum, the partial fraction thing, I think it's very unlikely you'll see like something like that precisely like the, on the AP exam. But that's just my opinion. And what do I know? Uh, you had this assignment yesterday. If you haven't written it down, write it down now. And then we're going to start with section 9.5.